Uh, thanks for joining us today. We are so excited to see you. Um, if you haven't met before, my name is Goli. I'm the VP of Customer Success at FlexRule, and I have Arash here with me. Arash is the FlexRule founder. In our, in our today webinar, we are talking about a very interesting topic, which we picked based on the um, feedback we got from the insurance companies, uh, decision intelligence for insurance. Um, great, let's start with who we are. We are FlexRule, headquarters based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, our mission is to empower all leaders, business, operation, and IT uh, in organization to improve the speed and quality of key business decisions. Um, we provide decision management suite guided by the methodology by a guided by the methodological decision centric approach. Proudly, we have customers around the world, North America, Europe, um, APAC, and we are interested enough from a very wide range of industries such as insurance, finance, leasing, and etc. Great, fantastic. With no further ado, to start our exciting webinar, I'm handing over to Arash, Arash for yours. Excellent, thank you very much everyone for joining us today. Um, the topic of the webinar, decision intelligence um, for insurance. Now let's get it started. Why decision making is complex in insurance? Insurance providers are in the business of decision making. They bet on risks and that's why. Um, every single member of the insurance team in claims, underwriting, pricing, audit, they make and execute business decisions based on the best ability, the information in hand, the situation, applicable rules, regulations, policies. They make judgment about cases. Let's face it, it's very overwhelming. The domain is inherently complex, almost always involves individual discretion. And now, as we human, we know that we have a very limited capacity in terms of number of quality decisions we can make every day. And as the day goes on, the quality of those decisions will degrade. And on top of this, there are four factors contributing in the complexity of decision-making insurance and make it borderline impossible to get it right for every single time. So these four categories of, some of them are blind spot for humans generally, not necessarily our fault. Um, judgment noise, um, narrow frame and meta model of the decision maker that they make that decision. The executive expectation from the outcome of the decision and the way we make the decisions and the frequency and complexity of the changes of the environment that insurance operate there. So let's have a quick look at these challenges for a minute. Let's start with judgment noise. So Daniel Kahneman, author, professor, psychologist, economist, and Nobel winner, um, studies human judgment and decision-making psychology, defines judgment as a species of measurement where the measuring instrument is human mind. And he believes there are much more, than, much more noise than what we expect in the environment. But what is noise? So let me give you an example. Imagine you want to measure a line with a very fine ruler. If, and in every single time when you repeatedly um, measure this line, you will have different result. And this variety in the result of the measurement is called noise. Sometimes you underestimate, some, sometimes you overestimate, and there are likely to be an error. And in average, this er average of this error is called bias. So bias is an average systematic error and noise is the variability of the judgment that should not exist because we are all talking about the same cases. The problem with noise though is it's very hard to point out. There is no right and wrong answer because by definition is the variability of the results. And there is a misconception about the noise that it balances out on average. So we think as human, we think we like to think the noise is the error um, of average zero, essentially. And it doesn't matter. It can sort out. Of course, that's wrong. So imagine in the underwriting scenario that the underwriting team on average price correctly, 
but sometimes they price too low and sometimes they price too high. When they price, when they price um, sometimes too low, the company is going to lose the money on claims. If they price sometimes too high, the company is going to lose uh, the business to the competitors. So we can see in these situations, both mistakes are costly. There is no way that it averages out and sort out itself. There is a financial cost, bad reputation, and customer dissatisfaction associated with neglecting to rectify the noise. So in the research Daniel Kahneman did for the noise, and the book, by the way, he recently published is called Noise. Um, he talked to the executive insurance companies about the expected variabilities they see from the underwriting result. And as we all know, um, underwriters are not going to agree perfectly with each other because by definition, judgment is defined by the possibility of reasonable disagreement. But from the executive point of view, they expected to have 10% variety in the result, but it turned out that it is 50% five times larger than what, what executive of the insurance companies expected. And speaking of the expectation, there are some other research uh, from the firm called Gartner that came out recently that the executive and all the stakeholders believe decision-making has been more complex than two years ago, and more than half of them expect more from the decisions that we make in terms of justification and explanation of the outcome from those decisions. And as we see expectation from the executive, this is a tremendous pressure on the people make and execute decisions in insurance um, landscape. Now, on top of these, um, human have blind spot in decision making. So if we take a broader view, when we take decisions, generally the decision outcome is better. However, humans tend to think very narrowly when it comes to the decision. That is called a narrow frame of decision making. And also we have built our own uh, meta model of our surrounding and the way we live and the way world works. And we project this meta model in the context of decision making. And these two in combination makes decision making um, very attached to the viewpoint of the decision maker. Um, imagine two accidents happens. Um, in one, the casualty is a um, kid, and in the other one, the casualty is, for example, an, an elderly with the cancer. Depends on your life experience and how you've been through your life, you will judge the scenario which is the same situation differently. But machines, they don't have this type of prejudgment and meta model that they can force the point of view into the decisions. And on top of that, last but not least, insurance providers going through lots of change every day. More than 1,700 changes in state insurance regulations occurred in the first half of 2023 8% off from the prior year. This ever-changing environment makes it very difficult to comprehend and identify what's needed what, and what's, um, what are applicable on different cases from today to tomorrow. So we see this uh, landscape of decision-making is ever-changing and we have these four blind spot and expectations from the executive makes it uh, borderline impossible for people in insurance to make and execute decisions. What can we do to address these challenges and make sure the quality of decisions do not degrade as we go through the day? And by the way, these decisions are across many different use cases and many different departments in, uh, in insurance, in the underwriting, in claim, in adjudication, in adjusters, um, doing ju ju adjudication on the claim, in the fraud, in sales and marketing, what product we offer to home for eligibility. It goes on and on. I also believe that um, machines and algorithms make certain kinds of judgment and decisions better than human. But um, we do this already using machines and algorithms to make decisions in many cases, aren't we? 
So what is the difference? So what is the gap? Because also traditionally, um, data and analytics experts and leaders were relying on the data and historical data and the time that it was called uh, big data and AI and statistical information, all of them, these advanced technologies to make better decisions. The gap here is this belief of using advanced technologies and investment of organizations in these advanced technologies are helping us to make a better decision, yet we don't know and we have conflict in understanding of what actual business decision is. So that's the gap between reality and the definition of what a business decision is. Yeah. And um, to our point of view, and we see it across many different um, prospects and clients we talk to, everyone tend to see business decisions differently, depends on their background, where they come from, and how they work and what they work on. Um, but decision is a decision. It's not process, it's not data, not dashboard, not algorithm, not rules. What does it mean? That means we need to treat decisions as a core entity in organizations, particularly in insurance, because it is about decision making, everything they do. We need to model, manage, execute, monitor, measure, improve decisions explicitly. And this is where the AI uh, part of the whole industry, the decision intelligence part of the AI comes into the picture. Decision intelligence is a practical discipline used to improve decision making by explicitly understand and engineering how decisions are made and outcomes are evaluated. And that's the um, definition from the Gartner. So what kind of capability and functionality a decision intelligence platform need to provide to make sure it satisfies the promise of decision intelligence? So there are six broader category of features functionality as part of a decision intelligence platform requirement because it is about the decision and it's called decision intelligence. Therefore, you can see at the top of the slide, decision flow design is the first and um, arguably the most important part of this whole um, feature requirement. Decision flow design allows you to build business decision, model business decision explicitly. It is a way to model business decisions rather than starting from rules or starting from data or starting from algorithm or starting from business process, you start with business decision. You model a business decision itself. It should be um, composable and that means you can build a full view of the decision making. Remember the issues we discussed about narrow view of decision making. So this composability allows you to build a wider view, a holistic view of the business decision with a smaller decision unit. So it should be composable. Also, this is not just a visual model for that matter that um, sits beautifully in the PowerPoint presentation. It should be executable. So you make that decision, you model how the decisions are made. And this model is an executable model. And because now we have a wider range of um, decision units coming together to shape that higher level hierarchy of the business decision that we are making, it essentially requires to use multiple different techniques in AI, some rule driven, some AI driven, some statistical driven, some optimization driven. So that's why the composite AI techniques come into the picture. Now we have a wider ring, a wider view of the decision making. We can use um, a composability of it to build a holistic view of the business decision. It's executable, and then it requires to involve many different techniques of AI to satisfy individual units of that decision. And of course, business decisions are not sitting in isolation. They require to interact into your organization's 
with your organization systems and processes and IT softwares and everything you do in organizations. Therefore, this will be enabled with the orchestration capability as part of decision intelligence platform. And of course, because of the expectation from senior executive of the um, of the company that you need to be able to justify and explain the reasons behind the decisions that are made, the decision auditing becomes one key capability as part of this um, feature set for decision intelligence platform. So decision intelligence is the practical discipline um, that allows you to explicitly manage, deploy, execute business decisions. Decision intelligence platform is the platform that with providing a set of capability allows you to do um, satisfy the promise of decision intelligence. So um, I just want to make sure we don't get these two confused. One is the discipline and framework of thinking. Other one is the platform that allows us to do that so. So how does it look like? So the first comes first that we need to model a business decision. There are many different ways of doing business decision. I, I wrote an article about it, the pro and cons of different approaches. And um, we came to conclusion, we need a decision graph. A decision graph in Flexroad platform is an ability to decompose a complex decision to smaller decision units, more understandable decision units. Um, they become reusable across multiple decision scenarios. So it is a composable objects of your hierarchy of the decisions. And then each decision units, each node in this decision graph you see um, can sa be satisfied with different techniques of AI. Some might be optimization, some might be rule driven, some might be statistical information from the data you have. So a decision graph um, allows you to model business decision holistically allows you to uh, build that relationship between the decision units of that business decision and specify the input requires for those uh, decisions uh, for the execution. And this is by the very an executable model, not just a graphical user interface you see. So if each of those nodes in the um, holistic view of the decision-making decision graph, as you saw, uh, can be satisfied with different techniques and happens that some of them are rule-driven. Um, you need to be able to model those business rules and specify business rules um, in an easy and visual way. So there are three different ways you can model those business rules. One is um, a decision table, a tabular form that is very similar to Excel and it's intentional because then you can leverage the knowledge that you have in Excel. So you build the rules using a decision table, or if you like, you can use your um, domain language. You can build a ubiquitous library of your terms and glossaries that you use in that specific domain in claim and underwriting and use them to express business rules using natural language. And if the rules are complex and hierarchical and calculation-based, you can use three software. So three different ways of modeling business rules that can satisfy one or more of those decision units as part of decision graph. And if that happens, one of, uh, or more of those units in the decision graph uh, are related to the optimization problem, which are many use cases across, decision, across the uh, insurance industry. Um, there is a way to do that. So, so for example, in claim, in pricing, um, in adjudication, in assessment as part of the claim. Let's say, for instance, that you have a set of claim and set of adjuster. You want to make sure that um, you, the throughput of claim processing are maximized based on the constraint capacity you have for adjuster that they need to satisfy their service level agreement. So how do you allocate this claim to adjuster? So this is a typical example of the decision optimization. Um, traditionally, it comes from the operational research part of the um, decision science. Uh, however, with the rise of decision intelligence, that should be part of the holistic view 
of the business decision rather than sitting somewhere in isolation. And to do that, so we have a decision lang capability. Decision lang is a language that allows you to model business decisions, many different types of decisions. And if that happens to be a decision optimization problem, that's what you see on the screen. And the benefit of using decision lang is it's a declarative model that allows you to model optimization. So someone might ask, why do we need another language? Because traditionally, when you do decision optimization, you need to use um, any generic purpose programming languages to use libraries like Simplex or Google or Tool or whatever that optimization library is that you're using. And that looks like this. As you can see, there are, if the left-hand side is Python, a generic um, a very popular generic programming language to doing everything. And left-hand side is decision, uh, right-hand side is decision length. So in comparison, you need to write twice more in Python to do exactly the same thing that you do in decision length. Decision length is declarative, flexible, and in a very concise way you can model optimization problem. And more importantly, it's solver independent. So you can sweep in and out different library of uh, decision optimization with the same model. And um, other part of the requirement of the decision intelligence was orchestration because let's face it, decision, you build a decision model. Now what? You need to deploy it and then you require to pass information to that decision or as a consumer of that decision, whoever that team is, they may not have access to some of the supporting information they're sitting, uh, they require for the decision uh, making uh, model that you have. So the decision model itself cannot really go and collect that information. You need to have an orchestration way to orchestrate between systems and information and data. And not only that, the orchestration should allow you to do long run decision at some point of time, the decision might be inconclusive and requires interaction with domain expert. It might take weeks and months and years to um, finalize an assessment, hopefully sooner rather than later from the client point of view, but it may take time. So it might have multiple stages. So orchestration is not just a transient orchestration. It's a long running orchestration that allows you to do involve data and systems and processes as well as human and domain experts as part of this orchestration capability. And last but not least, many of the knowledge of organizations, particularly in insurance, are sitting within the data of the past. So how you can access this knowledge, how you do understand this, how you can make decisions from the out, how you can compare the decision outcomes for different portfolio. So decision analytics come into the picture for this reason, allows you to simulate the decision changes that you do um, across the change set that you uh, need to deploy um, to your organizations, make sure that the decision changes are impactful and are moving the needle toward what you need to do. And also decision analytics enables you to build the machine learning model, train the machine learning model as part of the um, hierarchy of the business decisions, um, the holistic view of the business decisions that you have. Or you can use your own and bring your own algorithm that are you trained already in Python or other data science platform. But the point is that you need to simulate the decision outcome with something which is called decision analytics, ensuring the outcome of the decision is as expected. So if we put these components together, that will construct the decision intelligence platform, which is unified, integrated, and simple, allowing you to do any kind of decision-making with the holistic view of a business decision that you put together. But Someone might say, okay, so we have this tooling that is unified, integrated, simple, but how do we actually do this? So imagine you want to build a bridge that crosses the ocean, goes from one continent to another, uses the state of the art technology and 
materials and wiring and cement and all of that. But with having those materials and constructions, you're not going to have that bridge. So how do you do build this bridge? And by the way, you can build many similar bridges with different characteristics that are optimized for different things. You might build a bridge that is um, built to make sure that is low maintenance or make sure that is uh, optimized for self-driving car or make sure that is optimized for EV cars. They have a line for uh, charging the EV cars. Or So there are many different characteristics that you can imagine for building the same bridge. And that's one part of the challenge. And how do we actually build this? So same analogy and same principle applies when we're talking about business decision organizations. It's very, very complex. It will be influenced with many different factors and you can build a decision that satisfies many different characteristics. Now, decision-centric approach that brings people rules data processes together in a very unified form that allows you to build, execute, and manage business decisions that are optimized, customer-centric, and situation aware for different scenarios. So that's the promise of how we actually use the tooling to model and execute and build these business decisions. So at this point, I want to show the actual platform. How does it look like and how we do this? What you see on this screen is called Flexural Designer. This is the authoring platform that um, allows you to build everything around the decision intelligence. Now, in this particular model you see on the screen, um, this is a decision graph on calculating the health premium. So let me zoom in again more so it's easier to see. So you can see um, the decomposition. Let me explain what the decomposition in decision graph means. So if we want to calculate health premium, you can see the arrows pointing to that uh, particular node in the decision graph, which is this one and this one. That means calculation of the health premium depends on base premium calculation and situational decision. Now, if you look at the calculation, uh, base premium calculation, what you're going to see is this depends on extra charges and baseline pricing. And if you look at this part of the graph, you can see extra charges have residential status, um, cover type is uh, cover type, and the income. So that modeling the dependencies of a, and decomposing a higher decision, more complex decision to more smaller units of decision-making is called decomposition. Now, you can look at the decision graph from top to bottom. Um, that means um, it's a dependencies, or you can look at it from the bottom to top. That means a decision flow. So another way to read this particular decision graph is the outcome of the income and outcome of the cover type and outcome of the resident uh, C status goes to another decision called extra charges. It does the calculation based on the outcome of the other decision. Now the outcome of this decision goes to the other decision. So you can see it flows the outcome of one as an input for the next decision. So you can look at the decision graph as a decomposition technique or you can look at the decision graph from the decision flow technique. Either way works, depends on the people that they're doing it, personal preference. Now, each of these decision units, every rectangle here um, is a decision unit, um, can be satisfied differently. For instance, this COVID um, situation, um, it's a decision table. So if I open a decision table, decision table, the green columns are conditions, pink column is an action. You can have uh, Boolean values as part of the rules. You can have range values. You can have situational values. So it really depends um, how you want to model a decision table. And you can drag and drop many more conditions and actions from the toolbox as well. 
Now, if you look at, for example, that was a rule-driven decision COVID, and we used decision table to satisfy that. Now, if you look at this other model, which is uh, about the income, this model is called, it's again a rule-driven decision. You can build your terminologies and business terminologies and glossaries to build the rules using natural language. And you can see, um, uh, if I, I select it here, the rule number two says, when income is less than 70,000 and job type is part-time, add 40 to income charges. Um, essentially, you can read through uh, the rule. It's very easy to understand and it's very easy to write as it's a guided um, editor guides you to writing the rules. Uh, make sure that you don't, it makes, it makes sure that you don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, in this particular model, we have an integrated uh, machine learning model inside the baseline pricing based on the data we had for an example of the insurance. We trained the model that um, we use uh, in as part of the decision intelligence capability. We have an auto ML capability allows you to build the model uh, very easily. It does build it for you. Uh, you don't need to be data scientist um, to do that so. And that's the result of this particular model. Now, as you can see, uh, as part of this uh, holistic view of the decision for calculation of the health premium, um, you can go step by step and execute these um, individual decisions. Look at the result of them. You can drill down to any individual um, sub decision or decision units that you have. And that executes the decision. So you go to the first one, you can go to the next one. You are in control how deep you can go to executing those rules uh, in terms of the simulation and debugging capability. We skip all of that and I stop it. So you can see as part of this execution, now we calculated the health premium with the value that involved uh, that, that is the outcome of this holistic view, the decision graph for this particular scenario that involves multiple um, AI composite technique, machine learning, rules driven, and even the rules are using different techniques, decision table and natural language and so on. So I just pause here to see if we have any questions. Yep, actually, Arash, we have one question so far. Um, somebody asked how decision intelligence is different from what we do already. So the difference is that it's a unifying approach. Um, it's a convergence point that brings different techniques of decision-making to a unified form that allows you to holistically view at, and execute and manage business decisions rather than individually um, sitting across organizations and then you need to manually bring the data and outcome of them together to make that decision happen a unified form of decision-making which works out based on the um, decision graph, holistic view of your business decision, which allows you to compose multiple different techniques of decision-making as part of that. Yeah, and we have one more question. I guess we have two minutes to answer it. Um, is what you showed, is that a DMN, uh, sorry, DMN-based uh, decision and how is incorporated into orchestration? So um, yes and no. So it depends on how complex a decision graph is. Um, you can uh, integ you, you can export it as a DMN decision requirement diagram. So flexible um, decision capability um, is DMN compliant, and we are aiming to uh, be conformance level three in the next release. Uh, so you can have all of those field expression, box expression. Um, uh, modeled in flexible decision platform. So decision graph looks like decision requirement diagram, but it has more sophisticated um, behavior. So if you strip out those, for example, in any node, you can go and collect specific data related to that decision because it's a situational decision. So if you look at, at the very simple form of a decision graph, then yes, you can export it as a DMN, and yes, we are compliant with the DMN as well. And the way the orchestration works um, is, let's say that's a model for orchestration. 
So at some point here, you want to, let's say you go to a database and you want to collect the data and then um, that's a decision we already seen. So you can drag and drop it here. So if I open this, that's the same decision. So you build your orchestration around the decision that you have. And then you can say, based on this, I want, for, for, instance, uh, for instance, send an um, email for the recipient of the decision. And if that failed um, for the decision outcome, just terminate the decision. Uh, the whole orchestration. So you can see, you can simply drag and drop from your toolbox and build the orchestration around the holistic view decision graph that you have for the decision. Hope that shows the orchestration as well. Yeah, fantastic. So we've seen the demo of the platform uh, Decision Intelligence for Insurance. We actually have so many templates in different use cases of the insurance, in claims, in underwriting, in pricing, adjudication, uh, in optimization, many different ready to use examples as part of the platform. Great. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, if you like to, if there is any topic that you'd like to share um, with us that we need to cover in our next webinar, uh, please shoot an email to infoatlectro.com and uh, looking forward to seeing you again in our next webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Time.